Hello and welcome to the latest installment of PSG Talking. I'm your host, Ed, and on today's show, we're talking all about Paris Saint-Germain's dramatic 1-1 draw against Newcastle at the Parc des Princes. First, let's take care of a little business. Uh, head over to PSG Talk Extra Time on Substack for columns from myself, and we've got Jonathan Johnson from CBS Sports also contributing. Also, PSGTalk.com is your home for all the latest PSG news, so make sure you check that out and subscribe to this show, PSG Talking, if you like what you hear. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review. We'd love to see that. All right, let's get into the match. And here to help me do that is longtime PSG Talk writer, Eddie Razo. Eddie, Welcome to the show. It's been a while. How are things on your end? Uh, it's going well. I mean, the website's keeping me busy, so uh, that's 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 pretty much where where I've been at. Fantastic. You're doing an excellent job keeping us updated there. Love what you do there. Um, weather out there in, in Cali, keeping you warmer. Things starting to get a little chilly out there. Uh, anybody, getting down to the 60s, yeah, maybe? Yeah, it's getting down to the 60s, but I mean, anybody from <laughs> New York is uh, probably going to be laughing. So yeah, no, it's cold, but it's not like really, really out winter cold. We are bracing for uh, a few inches of snow this weekend, and and I don't know if you could tell if you're out there listening. I'm a little nasally. I'm coming off of a cold, so if you're wondering why we didn't have this podcast up right after the game, that's why I, I couldn't talk for more than 20 seconds without getting into a coughing fit. So I'm feeling much better. Um, so let's just get right into the match because there's so much to get into. I want to start, Eddie, with the, the starting lineup. Did you like Luis Enrique going with Danilo and Skriniar at center back? Were you questioning uh, leaving Vitinha on the bench in favor of King and Lee. Those were the the two instances I thought in the starting lineup a lot of people on Twitter were having a lot of issue with. But well, what's your opinion on that? Did you like those decisions? I, I was kind of caught off guard. I know I did an article, you know, we usually do a, a you know, a projected starting uh, 11 that, you know, whether it's Lequeep or Le Parisian put out. They had they had Lucas Hernandez sliding into the center back role, so that's what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting Danilo to be in there, and then when I wake up, I see pretty much what the starting eleven is going to be, and I was kind of like, "Wait a minute, what's Danilo, what's Danilo doing in there?" Because I was assuming Mukiele would go over to left back, uh, and Hernandez would slide into left, you know, to the left center back position. So I was kind of caught off guard there, and then. Obviously, the the Vitinha. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, he didn't start in the Newcastle the first, you know, the first leg uh, against them. So I was kind of sh- a little bit surprised again that Luis Enrique would decide, hey, I'm gonna keep him on the bench. So those were the two, like, you know, really, those are the two moves that kind of really cut off my, you know, kind of caught me off guard on, you know, when it came to the starting eleven. So, but yeah, I was definitely surprised by that. Yeah, looking at that starting lineup uh, from when PSG lost um, 4-1 at Newcastle in the midfield, if you remember, it was the four attackers, Ramos, Colomani, Mbappe, and Dembele. And then in the midfield, you had Zaire, Emery, and Ugarte. So you're you're right, Vitinha did not start. He was brought on in the 64th minute. It, it's really interesting. You know, you, you lose 4-1, you would think that maybe you would bring him in because every time he is brought in, he... Uh, he performs well. I think he was man of the match, if I'm not mistaken, against Dortmund the, on the first match day. So, you know, I don't, I don't know what Vitinha has to do or what he needs to prove. Maybe he, he's really bad at training. <laughs> I don't know what Luis way. Enrique is. Be- yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he's like Allen Iverson. Like, we're talking about practice. You know, when he, when he comes into the game, he's, he's really good. So, um, or, or, yeah, I mean, it's, it's head scratching. You know, Luis Enrique. I don't know if he overthinks. I mean, I, you, you would see it sometimes with like Pep Guardiola where he would like overthink. And I don't know, maybe that's Luis Enrique. Maybe we're getting a sense that this guy probably, it's, and I'm not saying he's a bad manager or anything, but maybe he just overthinks the situation. I, I don't know. That, that would be only my, you know, speculation on that end. Hey, that's a, that seems to be an issue with PSG manager after PSG manager overthinking it, probably going back to Laurent Blanc, just overthinking things in these big moments. Keep it simple. I, I didn't love Danilo um, in screen yard. I know we don't have a lot of options with Kempembe injured, Nuno Mendes is injured, um, Marquinhos. So I don't know what you could have done there. I think you're right. Lucas Hernandez coming in at center back, probably in the Mukiele as a left back. That's probably your, your best move right now. I didn't have a huge issue with King and Lee. I know Vitinha is really just a, a great player, but I also really like King and Lee. So 
I was willing to go with it, but um, he didn't have one of his his best yeah. games here, and so maybe the change to bring Vitinha on should have happened a little bit before the sixty seven sixty second minute. Maybe bring him on at halftime, a little bit extra um, time to make a difference. So, um, yeah, the starting lineup; those were kind of the big standouts, and you know, Colomani had a, a, a bad game, but. You know, you brought him in, big transfer fee and all that. You kind of have to play him. It's, the things just aren't clicking for him at the moment. But I, I can't fault Luis Enrique for for playing him there. Um, what did you make to PSG start of the game? Because I thought that they were really challenged uh, by an undermanned Newcastle side. Newcastle seemed quicker, more determined. They didn't appear scared of the atmosphere yeah. like PSG was at St. James's Park. Kind of like... Talk about that. PSG were kind of caught off guard a little I bit, I thought. I feel like Newcastle, I mean, you kind of saw it towards the end of the game where they were just flat. They were just holding on for dear life. But I feel like they probably decided, hey, we need to get this goal first. We need to strike first because, I don't know, maybe PSG, I mean, whether it's psychological or something something like that, maybe, you know, this is, this is technically a rebuild. This is a young team still. Not a lot of Champions League, you know, big time Champions League experience apart from like Mbappe or Hernandez. Maybe you can throw in Swinuar. Uh, but other than that, it's just like maybe they thought, hey, we'll punch them first. Let's see how they react. Uh, because, like you said, they were they were a depleted depleted squad. I think they were starting a teenager in their back line or, or a really young player out in their back in their back yeah. line or uh, because of all those injuries. So. They, I feel like they probably were like, let's just go for the first goal. Let's see what happens, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. But Donnarumma gifted, you know, pretty much gave them a gift uh, for that opening goal, and and they were just trying to hold on for dear life uh, for the rest of the game. So I think they just came into that to, to this game with the mindset, hey, we got to score first, and then we'll probably have to defend the lead. Not not exactly what they're used to, but. You know, under their circumstances, that's that's probably the game plan they had to do. They they needed to win this game if they wanted to uh, at least control their own destiny. Didn't get that, but you know, it, it's pr- pretty much what what I saw from my and I don't know if you saw a different or you have a different perspective, but I definitely saw them trying to get that first goal. Yeah, definitely trying to get the first goal. They, I think they used up a lot of their energy. The one thing that I kind of been talking with some of the PSG fans on like our Discord is that almost like the fitness level of Newcastle and a lot of the Premier League teams is just better than PSG or maybe we're on the same level we just don't show it. They seem to be able to run faster, they're quicker to the ball, they can press for longer. Um so that was one noticeable difference I thought in the, in the first half. And then I thought, you know, I was very confident going to this game, getting a little chesty on Twitter th- saying, you know, I can't wait for this game to come back to Paris because PSG, they rarely lose at home, especially in the Champions League. They play really well. They like being in the French capital. And I just thought they came out a little bit flat. I don't know if they were feeling themselves a little bit. There was a touch of that, like, kind of arrogance that I thought PSG had when they played a depleted Manchester United team under Thomas Tuchel. Uh, they came down and beat us. Again, another controversial penalty uh, that went against PSG in that one. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I just thought we just came out a little bit flat. It could be down to that starting lineup. I don't know what it was, but this – PSG had to win this game to make that away trip to Dortmund a little bit easier. And I was shocked that they came out and just were kind of like overrun by Newcastle. And then, you know, so many wasted chances. And I, and I had tweeted, I was like, you guys are professional footballers. The goal is, what, 24, whatever feet wide. Hit, Put it on frame at least. Make the goalie move. And their goalie, Pope, made several outstanding saves. But 31 total shots and only seven or so on target. we got to do better than that. That's a horrible uh, percentage. You know, obviously I was on PSG talk duty. But every time I kept watching the game and kept looking up, it was like, how is the ball not going in? And at some point, I don't know if you felt like this maybe late in the game. But I just felt like the ball was just not going to go. It was, it was going to be one of those games where the ball is just not going to find its way in. And, you know, for, for for more than 90 minutes, that was the case. But that's just the mentality or, you know, the mindset I had probably midway through the second half. I was like, this is, this is one of those games where PSG can put up 50, 60, 70 shots. Uh, they're just not going to go in. That's just the mentality or just the mindset I had uh, at some point. I don't know if 
if you ever got to that point uh, during that second half. Yeah, I definitely, as things looked a little bleak there, as uh, 10 minutes left in the game, I was just like, this this is horrible. We're, we're actually going to lose this. We're actually going to be in the Europa League or worse. And it was all doom and gloom for me. I, I just, like you, I didn't think the ball was going to go in the back of the net. But there was the moment when uh, the ball did go into the back of the net. Unfortunately, it was Donnarumma's goal. It was in the 24th minute. So let's talk about that. How much blame do you put on Gianluigi Donnarumma for Newcastle's goal in the 24th minute? Uh, it was Alexander yeah. Isak. Uh, it was a shot that came in um, <laughs> came in from distance. I think it was just outside the, the box there. and think- had some pace on it. Um, but I thought it was relatively weak. Yeah, that, Donnarumma that's- spills the shot. Isak pounces yeah, on it. Um, that's what I was going to say. So, I didn't, if I recall correctly, yeah. it didn't feel like it was like a really strong shot where he just needed to, to, to keep it out, right? I feel like, again, I'm, I'm playing armchair goalkeeper here. Uh, but I felt like he could have just either brushed it aside to at least push it to a corner kick or hold on to it. I, I feel like just, you know, punching it, I felt like that was unnecessary. And then obviously it just, it falls out of all people. It falls to Isak and he just makes no mistake about it. Um, and usually what Donnarumma is really good at is the shot stopping. Like you rarely have, he rarely makes a mistake when it comes to shot stopping. It's, it's, it's always with, you know, at his feet, you know, playing the ball at his feet. And so for him to make that mistake, I was like, you know, it, it, to me, it caught me by surprise because that's not something he does in terms of like the shot stop. He's, he's a really good shot stop. I mean, we saw a couple of games ago where, you know, he, he kept, you know, he won PSG the game by just keeping a clean sheet or, you know, so I, I feel like that was just a, a mistake that you normally wouldn't see from him. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely the the mistakes are starting to pile up, and at some point, I mean, I think you tweeted it or or somebody else. Uh, you got to start looking at whether you go with somebody else. I don't think they're going to go with somebody else, but you kind of have to start playing other people. Or, you know, like I, they did bring us a, a goalkeeper into the summer. There's obviously rumors about PSG going for a goalkeeper. Probably, I would say probably next summer. I don't think they'll go for one during the January transfer window. But at some point, they're going to have to realize, hey, if if they miss, if they go to, if they drop down to Europa League, or they are just eliminated from Champions League altogether, it's that mistake right there by Don Ruma is, is going to be questioned by a lot of people, and as to whether it's is it time to make a change, you know, at, at the goalkeeper position. I mean, we do. I, if I'm not mistaken, Keeler Navas is still collecting a paycheck from PSG. He's still available. He hasn't played in a while, but PSG do have two matches before they have to go to Dortmund. So, you know, do you, do you give him those two matches to get match fit? I don't know. Um, they they signed a a youngster. Um, I'm blanking yeah, his on his is, name. He's a Spaniard. Yeah, yeah, I know he's a Spaniard. I just his name is blanking on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I but you, you're not going to throw him you know, into the lion's den uh, per se against Dortmund. I, I think it'd be unfair to the kids. So I think for now we're, we're probably stuck with Don Ruma. You, you're paying him a lot of money. He's the goalkeeper of the future. He, You've seen him do it before. I, I think this is kind of uh, against Dortmund. It's going to be his last opportunity, I think, for a lot of fans. If he ends up causing costing PSG a chance to advance because of, of a mistake. He lets in a goal. I think he's lost all goodwill with the fans, and, and it's going to get ugly for him, and, and I think a change is going to have to be required. I've already seen some rumors about PSG looking at some league on yeah, uh, Leo, goalkeepers. Uh, his name escapes me too, but it's the Leo, the Leo goalkeeper. I know. Yeah, yeah, I think we saw the same report. So, yeah, I, I think – and Donnarumma probably knows this. He probably knows, like, hey, I need, I need to have one of those Nick Pope games. Yeah. Stand on my head, and make some saves. I mean, we saw it in, in, the, in the Euros when yeah. he came in. It's like that's why everybody was excited <laughs> about him because he, he has that capability. Is it something's not clicking? I don't know what it is. So, um, but let's let's continue with the game here. So there was no changes for Luis and Enrique at halftime, um, but we really saw in that second half a different PSG side uh, in the final 45 minutes. They were a lot more attack-minded. They were creating chance after chance. We were talking about that. They had a um, an XG of 4.54, recorded 31 total shots. What do you make of all of these missed opportunities? I mean, I, I'm mostly focusing on Dembele and, and Colomani as, as the two 
but the, everyone was missing chances. What, what do you make of this? Yeah, it's it's really hard to 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 put it into into words because you had Barcola missing, you had even Mbappe missing. Uh, that you mentioned Dembele and Colomani missing. It was just a parade of misses, and I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe it's just a one off. I don't want to put too much stock into this because we've seen them score goals. Even Dembele scored his first goal against you know for PSG uh, in the win over Monaco. So I, I just feel like I don't know if they got like you said they might be got overconfident and it and it bit them in the rear end. Uh, you know, towards the end, I think they felt like they got death. They were getting desperate because I'm pretty sure they knew if if they lost this game, they were dropping to Europa League or or possibly just being out of Champions League. They weren't going to control their own destiny. So I feel like they had that sense of urgency. And, and you hear it in the post game uh, remarks by Mbappe. He was he wasn't he wasn't happy with the performance. Yeah, they got a lot of shots on target. Yeah, they still control their own destiny. But you know, you you can't win. He even said you can't win Champions League games. Or big time Champions League games, if if you can't convert your chances, you're not. You, not a lot of teams are going to give you that many chances that or that no. Newcastle was giving them to to score, and it's just they it didn't happen. I, I I don't know what exactly was it. Uh, they didn't mention at least from the post game remarks, they didn't mention anything specific. But maybe it's just one of those nights. I mean, we see it in every sports like basketball where the the ball just doesn't want to go in the hoop, and and maybe it was just one of those nights. And and I don't. You mentioned Barcola. He's he's a new signing, twenty one years old. Um, I don't mind him coming on and having basically a hat trick of of missed opportunities because he is so young. He hasn't really played at this level in the Champions League. So like, I understand that from him. But like Dembele, Colomani, you guys are on the French national team. You scored big big goals. Dembele coming from Barcelona. It's sort of like inexcusable you should be converting these chances you should not create that many chances and keep missing and missing and missing and the thing is like like you were using the basketball analogy sometimes there's just you know a cover on the hoop and you just can't shoot but we've seen this pretty consistently this season where he's creating these chances and we get excited he's able to beat his defender and then he slips and falls or he blasts the shot over the goal. I don't know if like if it's his nerves or what. I, I think that's probably what it is. He wants to score so bad. And I like that. I like that mentality. But like calm down. Take your time. Focus. I don't know yeah. if he needs to go to a sports I, psychiatrist I, I, or what. I, but I, I even wrote it in a couple of newsers after he scored that first goal because maybe he just needed to get that weight off his shoulders, right? Like he, he gone so many games without scoring. But like, I mean, he was still racking up assists. He was still being man of the match in some in some games, but obviously he had that donut in the goal scoring department, and the, and so when he scored against Monaco, I felt like okay, the weight is off. It's 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 not now now he can fly. Let's see what let's see what he does, and then you know he drops a, a you know drops a not I mean he wasn't that bad, but you know he he, he couldn't score. So and I wrote an, a news article uh, quoting Jonathan Johnson. And it's just at some point you got to realize he's just going to be a hot and cold player. I mean, at 26, you're starting to see you pretty much are what you are. There's no, you know, I, I, there's no, you know, that's not a Kanging Lee or, or a Vitinho where they're still in their early 20s and you can still probably elevate your game at 26. You know, I, I think maybe at some point if, if Dembele just doesn't rack off these consistent type of goal scoring you know he doesn't have to be an Mbappe or a, or a Cavani or something like that but at least finish off his chances that he himself can create uh but at some point maybe we just got to realize it's he's just a hot and cold player he's a streaky player uh when he's hot he's hot when he's cold he's cold and I feel like maybe that's just the reality that we're gonna have to live with yeah Dembele finishes with a shot accuracy of 40 percent he's two of five there but chances created three. So that's why it's like it's difficult, Luis Enrique, because you're right. When he's hot, it's great. And you like these chances that he's creating. And maybe it's like the the Newcastle goal. Maybe he does get one on target and saved, and then Mbappe gets the rebound. It's hard to take off a player who's creating that many chances, who every time he gets the ball, you're sort of on the edge of your seat. But then he just keeps letting you down in the in the final third there. So it's it's frustrating. I don't know what you do. Um, he will be suspended for the game against yeah. Dortmund, so that makes the decision a little easier. What did you think about 
uh, yeah. Luis Enrique bringing in Gonzalo Ramos really late. Because I was watching the game on the Spanish um, broadcast. They kept mm. saying, well, hey, especially after I think they took out Colomani, they were like, there's no, yeah. and there's no one for an aerial presence. And that's where I think Gonzalo Ramos does really good. He can do, I mean, he scored some header goals. So were you kind of surprised that Luis Enrique didn't bring him in sooner? Because I think he came in like really towards the end, like 80, around the 80th, around the 80th, like around the 87th. Yeah, it's the 85th okay. minute, 85th yeah, so minute. Yeah, so I was like, are you, was that, did, did you notice something, or did, you know, did that cross your mind, or were you okay? Because I know, again, Ramos is like in the Colomani. Right now, they're, they're still trying to figure it out. And so I don't know if, you know, that's why he, I think Asensio came in before him. That's what that kind of caught me off by surprise. Uh, but obviously Asensio was playing really good um, before his injury. But I, I wanted to just get your thoughts on that. Like, were you kind of surprised that Gonzalo Ramos just didn't come in sooner? I, yeah, I am surprised. Uh, again, 85th minute, still managed to pick up a yellow card, which is interesting. But I think, yeah, especially as Newcastle sat in that low block, it was always going to be difficult. PSG are not good at the intricate passes and moving quickly. They, they struggle, even against league on size, about you know, breaking down these really low-block defensive-minded teams that are just sitting back absorbing pressure. You needed to have that aerial threat. So when you get a free kick or a corner kick, you have someone in the box. Without him, you're basically just kicking it to air. Like No one is there in the box to even remotely threaten to score. Maybe Skriniar is really our only threat, but then he's so slow getting back. It's like, do you really want him up that far? So yeah, I was surprised that that Ramos wasn't in there. And a lot of people on Twitter were kind of complaining about the same thing. Like, hey, we, we need an aerial threat. We only got one guy. Let's bring him on. So totally agree. Let's see what else we've got here. So Are, do, do, you want, do you just want to jump into the elephant in the room? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have anything else, I know people are, people are like, "Hey, when are you going to talk about that that controversy?" All right, let's get into it. We saved the best for last. The elephant in the room, as you said. Uh, let's get to the controversy at the end of the match. VAR awards PSG a penalty late into stoppage time. I want to. There's a lot we could talk about, but I know you covered this. You wrote a piece. What do you make of the media's reaction first to the decision? Um, <laughs> Because it's basically all anyone wants to talk about is that specific moment. So what do you make of the media reaction to it? Um, I mean, obviously it didn't help that it was the English media. <laughs> I mean, if it would have been like, if it would have been, you know, Borussia Dortmund, how many, like, how how loud how loud would it have been? You know, it, I, right. I'm, I'm not sure. How, it, a lot of people are really paying attention to the German media. So it, it didn't help that it was the English media. And they were just... I mean, I don't know if you saw the TNT Sports in 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 in, in the UK. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I forget his, the name, of the player. There was like a reaction where he he, he saw like the, the you know the the penalty award, and he was just blown out of his mind. I mean, you shared a couple of. I think there was a Newcastle fan on Top Sport crying or or something like that. <laughs> so it was. It did. Was it Alan yeah. Shearer? Was it was it him? Yeah, it didn't help the former like player. Media. And that's what kind of like. Like it, it shot it to the moon. Like you know, I, I think just being an English club, it, it was just going to be, it, it was going to go all the way to the max. You know, so it didn't help that it was the English media, and and they for the for the last twenty four hours they've been they've been running with it, and I'm not going to be surprised if uh, this weekend they still talk about it uh, when when Newcastle plays. So. It didn't help that it was you know it, it was that particularly you know particular football media. Yeah, what's interesting is that the media reaction are almost treating Newcastle like, oh, it's poor little Newcastle. They're just this, you know, determined, plucky young team that, you know, comes from nothing and they've battled to get into the Champions League. And, like, they completely have forgotten who their owners are, completely have forgotten that. And it's like big, bad PSG. They they robbed little old Newcastle. And it's just not fair. And every the soccer's not fair. Football's not fair. Um, yeah, and then the like fans calling up in tears that they were robbed and this and that. Let's make no mistake about it. PSG outplayed them. If they finish half of their chances, this game is 5-6-1. Okay. Let's also talk about Hakimi being brought down in the in the box by Gordon. Clear foul. Just bided him off the ball. Hakimi had possession. That was as clear a day a, a penalty as you'll get. And then there was another handball 
that I thought was probably even more of a handball than the one that was called. Um, who was it that had it? Was it, um, I think it was Miley, the 17 year old. I think it had, he had handled the ball in the box as well. And that, that was more of a, even, yeah, you know, everybody given. kept saying that was more of a penalty than, yeah. the, than the one they actually awarded. And I feel like maybe, I don't know if, you know, if we see it in refs, basketball or, 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 or like baseball or, or an ump misses a call, they'll, they'll make up for it yeah. down, the, down the line. I don't know if that was the case. Uh, but yeah, no, it, 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 what's funny is that the entire, especially the English media, they forget those two scenarios <laughs> and you brought it up to them. You, you said, Hey, well, why don't you guys talk about the, the Hakimi penalty and the other yeah. one that was more of a, of a handball play than the one they actually awarded. A hundred percent. And then someone showed me, it looked like screen yard. There was a moment when Isak and, and screen yard were battling and, and, and Skriniar went down, and it did seem like as he was rolling, his hand or arm hit the ball. Could that have been a red since he was the, the last person, potentially? So there was a lot that this official had missed. But I think at the end of the day, you look at how PSG played, you look at the chances created, 1-1 one, one is probably a fair result at the end of yeah. the day. The referee missed calls on both sides. It happens. I, I had tweeted out, I was like, hey, send me your when uh, PSG have been robbed. And I think that thread is still going down with examples. <laughs> it, it, so over the past decade, I, PSG I, have been like, robbed. There's some, there are some uh, games where I didn't even remember. Like, I don't know how the, the, the Kareem, I don't know if the Kareem Benzema foul on, on down. That one slipped my mind. And it just happened a couple of years ago. So there are some ones. Like, oh, yep. Yeah, I remember when that happened. And, <laughs> and yeah, I know. And then the Kempembe one with Manchester United. Like, oh, God. Like, yeah, I remember that one. So it's just, it's just reopening old wounds, but yeah, I mean, PSG has been on the, on the, on, on. More often than not, they're on that, that losing end, if you want to call it. You know that we're, we're they get the, yeah. they get the, the blank end of the stick, and and you know, Manchester United <laughs> gets the penalty. Uh, the no, but no foul call gets on Benzema. You know, obviously the the, yep. the oh, there's there's so many things in there that went yeah. against them, but yeah, the. It, it, it it feels good for you know at least give us once you know they they PSG rarely gets they don't they never get the the contra you know they, they're never on the good side of a controversy uh, in terms of uh, referee. yeah and, and maybe they felt like that the third penalty decision maybe they felt like oh you know we missed one earlier let's give them this one just to even things out we see that all the time in other sports especially like in the NFL if they miss a hold or a pass interference or they call something, they'll make it up with another call to even it out. So that's why I say, like, at the end of the day, 1-1 one, one is probably more than fair to Newcastle. They'll Again, they'll feel hard done, the English media and all that, but this is a more than fair result to Newcastle. So I, let's just pump the brakes on that. And just given examples, I mean, just in this group stage this season, we saw against AC Milan, it looked like Hakimi was fouled in the box. He had, you know, got kicked uh, by Rafael Leal. And that led yeah. to a goal. I think that was uh, Giroud's goal. So that like, and every all the PSG players stopped. And they like, well, surely that's a foul. <laughs> they should never stop. But like, it was so obvious they stopped playing. Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, PSG has been on the on the bad end of all of this, and all 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 the uh, how would you say? I don't, don't want to say whining, but all our cries, <laughs> all our cries. I've gone on deaf ears yes. in terms of, uh, you know, when we point out, you know, bad refereeing. And what's funny is that I think yeah. the VAR referee, I think it was just the VAR or the person in charge of VAR, yeah. he got pulled from, I think he was going to call or he was going to work the Real Sociedad game. He got pulled. So yes. the English media is, you know, pining and work for, for, for UEFA to come in and, and pull that referee from doing another gig. And don't you find it interesting that in Newcastle, of all teams, didn't they just basically steal a, a victory earlier this season, if I'm not mistaken, from Arsenal? And they had no problem with that. I mean, from the images that I've seen in the replays, the uh, the ball was out of bounds and the play kept going. And they and, and Newcastle were more than fine when they knew damn right well that that ball they, that they shouldn't a goal shouldn't have been allowed. And they just, you know, oh, Arsenal, stop crying. When in the Premier League, that could ultimately cost them a chance at the title because yeah. um, it's so close. 
And they have no problem with that, but then they want to cry about this. It's like either stand up for your principles and say VAR is wrong, let's get it out, yada, yada. And, and when you know a call goes in your favor that shouldn't, maybe that's when you speak out. Ah, uh, uh-huh. it, it is kind of hypocrisy. That's why I kind of that's, – well, that's why I, I – when, when you – I think it was a, a, a article from the Mirror you tweeted out. I kind of went like, okay – why are Arsenal fans trolling Newcastle fans? And then I saw that play. So, yeah, I mean, you can't have, like, what's the saying? You can't have your cake and eat it too. So, I mean, you just got to live with yeah. the consequences that come with refereeing. I mean, even with VAR, you're still going to get mistakes. Um, Eddie, I got one more question for you that's away from the, the PSG. Um, actually, hang on. I want to I, I want to get back into the yeah. Champions League here. I got a couple more questions for you. So, PSG, they sit in second place, three points behind Dortmund, who have already clinched their spot in the next round. PSG got to go to Dortmund. If they win, they're top of the group. Do you think this version of PSG can go into that environment, hostile environment, and win? Because this is essentially a knockout yeah. match, even if yeah. you know a win, draw win. or a loss could potentially see them through. I mean, th- this is a... A knockout stage Yeah, game. it's pretty much, I mean, it's straightforward for them. Win and they're in. I mean, there's no, I mean, yeah, uh, there's other ways they can get in. But the most, you know, the most, like I said, the most straightforward way they can do is just win and they're in. But the thing is, they have not won, they have not won on the road this Champions League group stage. So that's the, I, and I was listening to your spaces and why some people were uh, either pessimistic or not believing that this team can get it done. Uh there were a lot yeah. of pessimism. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to be optimistic. I, I just feel like, and and we have not seen that big time Mbappe, game, right? We it, this Champions League, that he scored some penalty kick goals, uh, but I, I haven't seen that one game where it's like I'm going to put you guys on my shoulders and I'm going to carry. You. Obviously, he can't do that every game, but these, you know, this game against Dortmund, you would want to believe. Hey, man, let's let let's. I got everybody. Everybody get on my shoulders. Let's go. I mean, you mentioned there's no Dembele. There's no Rugate. Uh, so it's going to be a whole different uh, starting 11 than what we saw against Newcastle. So I, 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 I want – the reason why I'm optimistic, I'm hoping for that in Bob Vegan. That's, that's what has my, like, optimism a little higher than what people were in your space saying. I feel like maybe – Mbappe knows this is the big – you know, he wants the responsibility. He wants to be at the center of a project. Well, here you go. This is the types of games that you need to, you know, show up and say, "Hey, everybody, I got you. I got you. Get on my shoulders. We're gonna. I'm gonna carry you." Because uh, Jude Bellingham is certainly doing that for uh, Real Madrid. Oh, yes, so yeah, yes. these these are the type of games. Um, yeah, this is the type of games that Mbappe's got to step up if he wants to be that guy. It, it's definitely we've seen him do it uh, when he was at Monaco. He certainly did well uh, at Dortmund. So. Um, yeah. I mentioned it in the spaces, but Dortmund would love nothing more to send PSG to the Europa League. They would absolutely love it. These two teams, I don't think, like each other. They're just two different footballing philosophies. So I don't think Dortmund are going to roll over by any means. You mentioned uh, PSG have not won on the road. But on paper, player yeah. by player, PSG significantly better. There really shouldn't be any excuses. And if you get rattled, because you're going into an atmosphere and they're going to be chanting or whatever, then maybe football's yeah. not for no, you. No, I mean, they, you know, they like, got the work. You're professional. I mean, you saw it against um, against when they were at Newcastle. I mean, I, I feel like they were not going to win that. Once Newcastle scored that first goal, they were not going to win that game. That, that you know, they were right. in the, they, they got the raw end of that stick where they got Newcastle's first game or Champions League game in, what, 20 years? So I felt like they were not going to win that game. They were kind of in it at San Siro. They... Obviously, you said it. The, the Hakimi won the controversy there. Um, it led to the to the eventual game winning goal. Uh, so they were in it there. Uh, so I, that kind of gives me a little bit of hope too that that they won't get rattled. Uh, but I feel like if you were to ask me what what needs to happen, they they got at least score the first goal, get some positive momentum. Because if I think if Borussia Dortmund scores or they, if, they, if Dortmund scores first. I feel like, you know, we've seen PSG get rattled. Um, we saw it against Newcastle where they were just throwing everything but the kitchen sink, but the ball wasn't going in. So I feel like for their, for everybody's, you know, mental health, at least they got to get the first goal uh, and then just take it from there. Uh, because, I mean, yeah, it's going to be, 
it's going to be a, a really tense game because a lot of a lot of it's riding on the line. I mean, if if you want to believe the rumors or the reports that Mbappe's decision to stay at PSG past this uh, this season hinges on their Champions League performance, then you know it adds a little it adds more fuel to the fires to win this game. You know, I don't even know what the analogy would be, but like you advancing in the Champions League is dependent on you, and if you don't get there, it's probably because you didn't do enough. It's like you you got to step up here. So I, yeah, I'm with you. Mbappe's got to carry PSG in this one. There's no re- Emery Chan, I believe, is out for Dortmund. They don't have the skill level to, I think, stop Mbappe. We beat them two nil. So I'm with you. Got to get it done, um, Eddie. Let's get you out here on this last question. Just moving away from on the pitch stuff and going off the pitch, since you cover a lot of the transfer rumors. What do you think PSG are going to do in January? Are they going to be buyers, sellers? Any signings you think they'll make? I, uh, well, the 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 big one or the major like loud one where it's like multiple reports, like it's just different outlets reporting the same thing. It's that uh, PSG are going to go after, or they're on the verge. It's, I mean, the report today, obviously, this is from sport, so take you know Spain, take it with a grain of salt. But they say you know PSG is one step away from grabbing. Uh, I hope I'm not butchering his last name, but Gabriel. Mos, Moscardo or Moscardo uh, from Corinthians, a Brazilian, yeah, yeah. Uh, 18-year-old, you know, really good young midfielder. Uh, <laughs> you know, PSG has struggled with their midfield over the last years, and now it feels like they're going to have different types of players that they can mess around with and see what works for them. But that's that's the one rumor that's, that has a lot of legs, at least from the reports. It's multiple. I mean, you see Fabrizio Romano. You saw, I think, Fabrice Hawkins. Uh, from RMC Sport reported too. So that's like the big one that's going to come in. Obviously, he's 18 years old. He's still raw. So I don't know how much. Like- it's interesting because PSG have a player like that and Cher and Dor, um, who they signed, who has a lot of promise, plays in the I midfield. I feel like they just want competition. So, I, I mean, that's why probably yeah. they have Gonzalo Ramos and Colomani. I, I think it's all about competition. Like, we don't want nobody to feel comfortable that their spot is safe. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's why Vitinha isn't starting against Newcastle. Uh, uh, that might be it, but, uh, I feel like they want to have depth and obviously if eventually they want to make these deep runs in Coupe de France, Ligue 1, uh, Champions League, you need depth. I mean, we saw it last year where they were starting, uh, you know, they were, they, they didn't have a lot of depth and I feel like they just want to have depth. So when eventually they start advancing in the Champions League, whether it's this year or, or in the years to come. They have all these young players that they can rotate in and, and go deep in all these different competitions. Because if you're PSG, I mean, if, if Mbappe does stay, or at least, you know, if they're going to have this goal of, hey, we got to advance and go as deep as we can in all these tournaments domestically and, and internationally. So I feel like that's my, my that's just my two cents on it. But that's the, that's the one rumor that's really loud and, and probably has a lot of legs and, and could get done uh, you know, the January transfer window is opening in a few weeks, and that's probably the one that might get done. Uh, other than that, I'm not seeing anything like concrete. Uh, uh, the the Leo defender, obviously, reports said that PSG is prioritizing him, but it came out it, just a few hours later after that report, it said that he's not keen on leaving during the January transfer window, which I kind of understand. Leo is right now battling for Champions League, or, you know, one of the Champions League spots, or at least getting into Europe. So it would make sense for them to sell off arguably their best defender, uh, despite him being, uh, I think he's 18 now. Um, so that's, those are the only two. I mean, the, the Leo goalkeeper too. The, uh, there's nothing like really big. I think there, I think if they do stuff, it's going to be supporting cast or like little minor tweaks. Um, they said that they're not going to go for a left back. I think they're betting on Nuno Mendes to get healthy. I don't know if they're going to stick to that, but but I would say if 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 aside from midfielder, I think they'll probably go for a left back. Um, other than that, I don't I don't see any, anything. I've not read or seen any other major changes. Yeah, it's it's pretty quiet. We did a lot of business in over the summer. I think maybe one thing we will see probably a lot is because uh, Zimbabwe he could sign. Oh, yeah. I guess a, a contract <laughs> with Real Madrid. So I'm sure they'll, especially if PSG are in the Europa League, look for that oh, to really no, heat yeah. up. As soon as that Dortmund, go, as soon as the <laughs> Dortmund going goes final, it's either going to be is Mbappe leaving or 
is Mbappe staying because they advance to to the knockout stage. It's it's going to be one way or the other. Uh, so yeah, get ready yeah. for that firestorm. If if you if you if you didn't have enough of it over the summer, you're going to get a little bit more of it in January. It, it will certainly keep you busy. Uh, all right, Eddie, thank you so much for recapping this match. Um, PSG 1-1 against Newcastle. We'll look ahead to that December 13th against Dortmund. You'll be all over it, I'm sure, as will we. We'll talk all about that one as well as the matches coming up uh, in Ligue 1. So exciting times. Eddie, let everyone know how they can find you on Twitter slash X yeah, if they want to uh, interact with you. You can find me at, uh, at what is it, Eddie, Eddie Rosso 91 uh on twitter uh but obviously check out uh, psg talk uh that's where you can find all the news and rumors i try to stay on top of everything uh but now with the january transfer window coming up you know it's going to be a lot more so yeah if you want to stay informed uh on anything just check out the website that's uh that's pretty much where you find all all my stuff and yeah pretty much just check out the website fantastic thanks so much for joining the show eddie of course you can always find me at psg talk and i've already mentioned all the other places we're at so just follow like and uh, leave a comment there we'd love to hear from you thanks so much for listening we'll catch you next time bye everyone